Hello. I'm Alex Hadlick. And I'm Maggie Smith, and we are the assistant directors of Viking Corral this year. We. <laughs> We, we wanted to thank you guys so much for coming out here in the tundra today um, and for tuning in at home, for those of you who couldn't make it. Uh, this year, Viking Corral has had a common theme of love throughout our repertoire. The piece that you just heard, M. Roger Holland's Lord Make Me an Instrument, as well as our next piece, Jason Robert Brown's I'd Give It All For You, tell of a senseless giving kind of love. Both of these songs have complex meters and tricky rhythms, but we've challenged ourselves this term to not learn these songs by looking them up on YouTube or Spotify or anything, but to instead learn them through their musical written notation. One of Viking Corral's strengths is that it is made up of students from all over campus, so everybody brings something different to rehearsals, and that has allowed us to prepare this set with our most challenging music yet. Yeah, so we have English majors who can help us dive uh, deeper into the text. We have music majors who can help us with those tricky rhythms and everything in between. And we just wanted to take a second to thank our student leaders who helped us uh, prepare, learn, and engage with this beautiful music this term. We would also like to thank Dr. Steek for his guidance, as well as giving us the opportunity to work with a real-life choir. We'd like to thank you again for being here on this snowy afternoon, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the program.
I just wanted to say hello and welcome, and we're glad that you're here, especially those that made it through the snowstorm. So. Well, hello. Thank you for joining us today on this fantastic Sunday snowy afternoon. My name is Victor Montañez Cruz, and I'm a senior music education major. And my name is Tyler Jakes, and I'm a junior music education major. So the piece that you just heard was Secret Cervus by Giovanni Pierluigi da Palestrina, and the text of the piece reads as follows. As the deer longs for running waters, so my soul longs for you, my God. Um, and obviously with the religious connotations to the text, we wanted to, to kind of separate that and kind of make it a well-rounded and, you know, more applicable things that don't revolve uh, religion. So. Similarly, our next piece, Like a River in, uh, yes, like that's the one that we're doing. Like a River in My Soul, arranged by Tim Osiak, um, is also derived from an African-American spiritual, uh, I've Got Peace Like a River. And though, so the new piece arranged is it's a new, it's a fresh piece. It's decentered around, it's decentered from religion. It takes a new melodic context. And um, we really just want to acknowledge where it came from, but we've had a really great time as an ensemble exploring where we go when we feel lost and finding solace and refuge within each other. And so it's pushed our ensemble a great deal. So we hope that you enjoy it. 
We also wanted to thank our fantastic collaborative accompanist, uh, Daniel Boyd, as well as Margaret Peck and Dr. Swan for helping us throughout this entire song cycle. So thank you, and we hope you enjoy.
So, Raffaella Aliotta, the first composer of our, the composer of our first piece, was a nun and music director at the San Vito Convent in 1593. It was here that she wrote a book of motets that included the work we'll be performing today, Ego Flos Campi. This book was her only publication and is the first known work of sacred music by a woman to be printed. All but two of the texts in the collection are secular poetry and describe traditional love, but the first and last pieces in the collection are religious texts. Ego Flos Campi is one of those pulled from the Old Testament Song of Songs, a collection of love poetry between a bride and bridegroom. This text was a central means by which Christian European believers in the 17th century described and cultivated their increasingly personal and intimate love for the divine. While the path to salvation previously had been through sacramental actions such as baptism and communion, with priests being intercessors between God and his people, individuals became more focused on experiencing this mystical love directly. The text of Ego Flos Campi uses sensual imagery to describe the female speaker as a beautiful flower among thorns and a blooming apple tree among other trees of the woods, imagery that was usually equated with the Virgin Mary. These sensory descriptions were meant to heighten the emotions of believers and therefore heighten their devotion to God. Aliota and her sisters could very well have experienced this piece as an allegory for their own love for Christ and his for them. As you listen today, try to pick out the voices of the female and male speakers um, and how they speak to each other of their love. This is represented by the two separate choirs. We hope you enjoy Ego Flos Campi. Hi, I am Henry McCammond Watts. The following introduction was written by Katie Muller, who would love to be here, but sadly could not make it back from Bjork, London because of the inclement, stormy weather today. So uh, I will be reading for her. Bach brings up all sorts of images to all sorts of people. With his music being so firmly established in the canon, it can feel like working through a performance of his music might be less of a pursuit of communal creativity and more of some sort of musical duty. But I am happy to announce that learning this music over the last five or so weeks has been a time filled with room for all sorts of collaboration, exploration, play, and creativity. When you listen to this piece, Kom Jezu Kom, what I want you to know is that it's excitingly weird. This piece is about dying. More than that, it's about longing for death. In the religious context this piece was written in, death is seen as the closest your body ever gets to be to the divine. 
In this piece, we as two separate choirs call out to the divine, long for the divine, fall in love with the divine, and dance with the divine. Now, I study religion and Christian mysticism, so I can say with full confidence and authority that I have no idea what the divine is or where we definitively find it. But I can say that it has felt like entering into a sacred space to make music with all the people up here most days. So with that, we invite you to come in and explore this piece and to think about where you seek out the sacred too.
everybody. You're about to hear Joseph Gregorio's Martes, which sets to music the following Spanish proverb. Martes, ni te cases, ni te embarques, ni de tu casa te apartes. Tuesday, don't get married, don't go on a trip, don't even leave your house. <laughs> Gregorio writes that in some Spanish-speaking countries, Tuesday is considered a bad luck day, sort of like Friday the 13th which is why the horror movie Friday the 13th was renamed for its release in Spain, Tuesday the 13th. The frenetic, sometimes discordant motion of this piece gives a voice to the superstitions that are flitting around in our cultures, histories, and brains. Enjoy.
Hello. My name is Lena Wong, and I'm majoring in psychology and voice performance. And I just wanted to talk about our next piece, We Are the Ones. Um, this poem was really meaningful to us as a group, and I'll read it to you, um, by Linda Studley. We are the ones who take the chance, who sing the song, who step the dance, who dare to try, who lose control, and don't care who might see our soul. The ones the world's sweet song enchants. And in our search for true romance, we take a stand, a lover's stance, against indifference, hard and cold. We are the ones. Come sing the song, come step the dance. Give up your heart and take the chance. Be, and open up our eyes, behold, and as possibilities unfold. Take back your dreams from circumstance. We are the ones. And we talked about this as a group, but the um, composer puts it the best, that this is an invitation to trust our innate desire to connect with others and follow our dreams. And it's an enchanting song for us all to connect through music. So thank you.
Good afternoon. We're so glad that you are, have joined us in this snowy afternoon to be here. Um, we have been working on these songs that are a bit disjointed, but at the same time, they all have a basic theme of empowerment and strength. And um, before I go on, I wanted to make sure that you're aware in the program, if you've taken a snapshot of it or you're looking online, um, one name was left off, a couple of names actually. Um, Michael Murphy will be joining us on guitar today, and so I just wanted to acknowledge him. And I wanted to especially thank Kyle Brower for all the work he has put into helping us stage and choreograph this piece. Um, he's just been a terrific aid in what we've been doing and just a terrific friend. And he's an alum, and we're glad to have him back and joining us as well. So please thank Kyle for us. This song has resonated with me for a long time. I, I have saw the movie um, The Greatest Showman and loved it, and there have been mixed reviews about the show. Um, whatever you feel about the show, this song is really um, a powerful and engaging song. Um, I don't know whoever came up with the phrase, um, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. They didn't know the actual facts of that statement. Because words can be really damaging and really hurtful. And in the middle of this song, it talks about um, how words have affected um, us individually and how we can overcome that and um, the strength and power of knowing who we are. And so this song really makes a statement for us as a group about who we are and the strength that we can find from within. And when we share that with each other, how important that is as well. We've talked uh, all year about gratitude and how important it is to us to uh, be grateful for the things around us. And today I'm particularly, particularly thankful for this group behind me who have um, joined together to really make such a, an impactful difference in the lives of each other in the group. So um, I know that that is going to spread beyond the walls of this conservatory and go into the college and into the community around them and to their families. And I just wanted to say thanks to them. This is me.
Thanks. We're going to ask um, alumni of Cantala to come and join us. We're going to do one last piece today that has become kind of a favorite. For 18 years, I have been looking for a song that could be kind of Cantala's theme song. And uh, we have done this song in the last two years, and it's sort of stuck. So you're going to hear this every year. <laughs> this is um, Tana Solbizzi, which just brings great joy to me every time we hear this. So please enjoy this last piece that we do, Tana Solbizzi.